Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and happy Halloween to you all. Welcome to the last video of Huntober 2020, the mini series where I take a look at Halloween games, horror games, basically games you'd find yourself playing around this time of the year. I give a playthrough, I give it a look, I give my opinions on it, and if people want to see more of it, maybe it'll become a future series. Today, we are playing a game that, well, takes place on Halloween. I mean, what other game would you play on Halloween other than something like this? This is Haunted Halloween 85, a game on the NES, a game that is not from the NES era though because this game came out like three four years I believe I don't remember it was somewhere around the last 2010s and it's a pretty fun side scroll beat em up game uh, this game is actually one of those like retroactive games you if you don't have the NES version of it you can actually get it on Steam but I'm retro like that so that's why I have I am playing the NES version tonight so let's get started and let's get into this mess. Let me tell you about Halloween. In 1985, the things I saw, the creatures I battled, my name's Donnie, Donnie Johnstown. At least that's what my friends call me, cause I'm Donnie from Johnstown. I just moved here to Possum Hollow and I'm the reason this town is no longer haunted. I saved everyone from the haunts that were destroying this town. And this is how it all went down. Yeah. Please, we don't need the extreme close-up. I woke up in a total panic, and I overslept because I was up all night playing the NES. I totally missed the bus and had to get uh, no way to get to school. And if I didn't get there, I wouldn't be allowed to go to the Halloween dance after school, which meant no holding hands with Tammy. Which meant that no Tammy and Donnie sitting in the tree. And we were just going to sit in a tree, nothing else. That couldn't happen. I had no choice. I had to run all the way to school. It would take forever, but I had to do it. Tammy would think I ditched her, and if I didn't make it to the dance, then that just couldn't happen. I had big plans for us. If I could just make it to school by the last period, I could sneak into Miss Belshuk's class. That old lady has always been blind as a bat. She's never, she'd never know that I would be missing. And so, off I went. If you can tell by the design of some of these characters, yeah, this game was really inspired by Retro City Ransom, or River City Ransom. All the way through Old Man Dunmore's cornfield, every Halloween we take corn from the Haunted Mary's Field, a haunted Harry's field for the the corn uh, the corning houses. We always heard the crazy stories about him, but never actually saw anyone on the farm. Late at night, though, we would always hear some strange noises coming from the big red barn. Look at that strut! Past them all, as much as I wanted to go there, was no time to stop at the arcade. There was no time for games. This was serious. Just strutting through the woods. And through the woods. It felt like the school was a million miles away. The woods were dense and they were and there were jagged bushes everywhere. That slowed me down, but nothing would keep me from that dance. I was getting close. Finally, my school. But something happened here. The place was trashed. Oh, okay, please, it can't be that. Okay, never mind, it is that bad. All right, and now we are into the game. So, as you can see, again, very Retro City Ransom inspired. Uh, we got we got some beat up combos. Uh, we also have a uppercut, which one hit kills. Most enemies in the game. Oh man, I want to join the NES club. I got a pretty good NES collection, so I think I'd fit right in. So all we just need to do, just get to the end of the level, beat up anything that moves that's not us, and also avoid any stage hazards. 
Takes about three punches, or four punches to take out a zombie, but one single uppercut will deal with him post haste. Like that. Actually, it can also hit multiple enemies. That's good. Definitely want to be careful of the pits out here. Now, anytime we get hit, as you can see, Donnie's uh, skin color changes and he becomes more zombified as he takes more damage. As you can see, he's now very pale. You got ghosts right here. They basically can pop in from anywhere and they are really a big pain to fight, but not as big of a pain as to fight as the enemy from the next area. Gonna grab ourselves some candy corn, that way that it will heal us. Candy corns will heal one point of health, but if we can find a chocolate bar, then that heals multiple points of health. I think it's a full heal, to be honest. Also, grab that green can up there. That is a special serum that, aka, basically just extra lives in this game. And, yeah, that's basically haunted. Just go through the end of the level, beat up anything that moves, and uh, try your best not to die. Sometimes enemies will drop items. Most of the time, you'll be just finding the items outside on the field. There is also a uh, running punch combo that does like two damage to enemies. Each enemy actually does have like a, a damage counter to them. So like the zombies only have four HP. Uh, the ghosts, I believe, only have like two to three HP and so on and so forth. There are some enemies that are invincible, which is a pain to be honest. They're really such annoying enemies that they actually have to trick to get by. Ghosts are always annoying in their own right because they can appear from anywhere. They can appear above you, below you, behind you, diagonal. So, yeah. Go, PHE! No, 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 no. Smack those spirits. Ooh, oh, no, give me that candy corn. Thank you. This game really does encapsulate something you would see from the NES era because, well, yeah, it sounds and looks just like an NES game, A, but also it has the NES challenge added to it because these platforming challenges, oh boy. As you can see, the platforming challenges could use a little bit of work. Donnie moves incredibly slippery, like he takes like a good maybe second to two seconds to fully stop here. I'll click right here, and you'll hear when I release on it. Yeah, he's got a bit of a slide to him, so basically it's like running around on ice physics a little bit. Not as tedious as ice physics are in most games, but still. When it comes to precision platforming like this stuff, it can be a bit of a hassle. Head up here, grab ourselves a chocolate bar, even though we don't really need it, but I do really need that can because that will replenish any lost lives. One good thing about this game is the fact that if you leave the screen and come back, uh, just like the main screen and stuff, then all items get replenished. That is actually invaluable when it comes to the final level of the game because you can just grind off lives for a good, like, solid five to ten minutes or so, if you or however long you choose. Because the boss of that area, oh boy, I've got, I've got some things to say about that boss. Also, I've got things to say about a leap of faith right here. Ooh. I would never a family in games expect you to do a leap of faith, especially with not being able to judge how far, uh, how deep the next platform is. What does that say? Oh, I think it's the Halloween dance. All right, boss time. It's a thing inside the cabinet. I'm just gonna keep beating him up. And we're done. Congratulations, I beat up a cabinet. I almost spazzed out when I saw all the other kids have been turned into zombies. They were all gooey and deformed, and those ghosts were totally creepy. I always hated the Dewey uh, decimal system. And I thought that old car catalog... Okay, sorry about that. I had a mild brain lapse. I was out of here, straight back into the woods. I didn't care that the sun was starting to set. It wasn't sticking around that school any longer, and I couldn't tell this. I could tell this was wasn't going to be easy. I need as much candy as I could get from killing those mindless dweebs, and as much of that serum soda I could find, no matter where I had to look for it. 
It was the only thing that was would keep me from turning into a zombie like my friends. I had to book it. I was look losing daylight and fast. Which is why I'm going into the woods at dusk. I can't go around the woods. No, I have to go through the woods. Introducing the most annoying enemy in the entire game, crows. I hate these guys. They are so annoying. Basically, they like to dive bomb you. But the problem with them is they like to blend in with the background. And in later levels, when it gets really late at night, yeah, they're really hard to see. And they are not fun to fight. Especially when they just come in wave after wave after wave after wave of crows. It's just ridiculous. They, they make like a what would be a pretty standard boss into just an absolute nightmare to fight, to be honest. Do some platforming on these tree branches and trunks. Don't really need that candy corn, but, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. And taking candy corn anytime is always a punishment because candy corn, not not good food. Not really good. Also, I'm a glutton for punishment in the case of I keep forgetting that there's two serum sodas right up there that I need to do like a long jump to get up to. Can't do that. Can't bounce off enemies' heads, so I kind of screwed myself. But at least I got some candy corn out of it, I guess. Not really what I would call a good consolation prize. It's more of, hey, instead of getting a punch in the gut, you get a slap in the face. Go away. See ya. Ooh. Uh-oh. This is bad. This is bad. And I'm a zombie. So yeah, anytime you lose all your health, you just turn into a zombie, but I guess because I got the serum sodas, uh, he just takes a sip of it and immediately transforms back into Donnie. Let's hop over here, hop up here, deal with this stupid crow. I hate these stupid crows, especially here when it's precision platforming. Ooh, ooh, and I'm dead. Man, they put those crows in evil locations. I, I kind of want to find a person who uh, did the enemy placement for this game and who put those crows there. And I just want to hold them close, look them directly in the eye, and just go, Why? Why? Why do you hate us like this? Bandai here. There we go. Ooh. All right, I'll take the hit if it means I don't fall to my death. You, on the other hand, you can fall to your death. And I see a soda up there. I'm gonna snag it. There we go. And some candy corn. I will gladly take that as well. Uh-oh. Okay, one thing I do like about the forest level is this part where it's like you're out of the forest and it, you're running across a field. There's fields everywhere, and then you get introduced into one of the, probably the second most annoying enemy in the game. Uh, poison jack-o'-lanterns. They hop when you do, so what you need to do is you need to do a, a quick little bunny hop to get back to the ground fast so you can jump over them before they have a chance to jump again. So just, and there. Dip, dip. Nope. Get hit like that. Hello. And a one and a two. And a one and a two. And a one and a two. And we are done. I think I'm one hit away from dying, so ooh, thank you. Okay, now I'm two hits away from dying. Ooh, I want that candy corn. Excuse me. There we go. Oh, you have to tempt me like that game, huh? Alright, well, at the very least, I can grab that soda.
These these jumps are kind of tricky to pull off, especially with the fact that we want to grab that candy corn up there. You have to do a quick bunny hop to get across some of them, and sometimes a like a long jump, but a delayed long jump. You got these tiny platforms right here that you need to do some precision platforming on. It's not the easiest challenge. Ooh. Ooh. Almost there, and just fall down here, and we're safe. Okay, maybe not safe. Definitely not safe. Come on, give me the soda. Thank you. Right here, deal with the ghost again. Enemies will always spawn in the same locations every time, so if you can remember where they uh, appear from, then you should be able to deal with them no problem. Oops, oh dear. Definitely don't want to be stuck down there. Thankfully, it's not by Mega Man logic of spikes are insta-death. I was kind of hoping for some candy corn from you guys. While enemy spawn locations are always an exact, uh, dropping items is not always an exact science. I'll snag that at least, even though I think that's just a trap candy corn right there. Because you have to hit those spikes if you want to get it. Alright, and with that, we're out of the cave. And immediately get it meet by a zombie. Thanks, game. I think we're actually almost done with the forest, to be honest. I think just a few more walks here, and then uh, we should be at the boss. Oh. Okay, good. All right. Hop down here, grab that soda, and what could you be up the boss of the forest? Why, Bigfoot! Of course! Who else would it be? Thankfully, if you die to a boss, it actually will just drop you off right back where the boss is. And Bigfoot's a bit of a pushover, to be honest. All you have to do is just punch him in the face every time he jumps up at you. If you stand right here, then he can't really do anything to you. And we're done. I didn't even have to move off my stump. The woods were way scarier at dusk. Those killer crows and poison pumpkins were not there either. There earlier. In the day that Bigfoot was not wigging out like that. I could always see Bigfoots in those woods, but they were never tricked, ticked off like that. Something had to have spooked it. My mom never believed me when I told her about them, but they were always rooting around those old woods. Never had to use the secret exit out of the back of the 2600 Crew's treehouse. It led to some strange parts of the woods. Man, those 2600 guys are dorks. At least I made it back to the mall. I hoped someone would be inside that could help me. Or at least I could get a cheeseburger. Donnie, Master of Priorities. Almost as bad as Bentley from Sly when it comes to being the Master of Priorities. Something wasn't right about the mall earlier. A lot of lights were out. I had a bad feeling about going in there. Okay, so the mall, I have been different opinions on, to be honest. Uh, it's a very standard level. The, the music can kind of get really annoying, but at the same time, it's got like a pretty catchy beat to it. It's nothing too spectacular, but some of the areas in it are pretty creative, so I can't really fault the mall as being a bad level per se. The boss of this area is kind of a BS boss and it's I even struggled to even call it a boss. But you'll see when we get to it. If we get to it. Ah uh, yes. Good old VHS, my favorite store. Honestly, at the talk of VHS and the fact that I still actually own a lot of those. Uh, recently I've been doing like a replay through of Majora's Mask and I'm oddly reminded of the Majora's Mask like promo VHS that was given out a long time ago. I need to find that thing and rewatch it because it was quite something back in the day. 
I just need to remember where I hid the thing. I wonder if it's even still good, because I think VHS tapes uh, degraded over time, I believe. Or just so long as no one touched the tape itself. Oh boy. Alright, this might be a bit difficult. Up. 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 And we're good. Now, for the longest time, I could never figure out how I'm supposed to get the serum up there. Like, you see a serum can up there, and I figured, oh, hey, maybe I need to jump onto the stairs in the background. But I can't really do that because I can't get enough momentum to run and jump at the same time. Or I can't even jump, to be honest. I don't know what's going on. Honestly, I think that's a, a trap serum. It's just there to taunt you because I don't see a way to get up there unless you can magically jump onto the stairs back here. But you can't, unfortunately. Which, it's not all that bad. There's a serum right there that I can't get to either. I think I would need to get a running start before I could jump up there. Oh well, there's still better places to get serum soda, so it's not really something I need to be worried too worried about. Like right here. Get a serum soda and also get some candy corn. So, it's a double win. Nope, 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 nope. Stay up there. Thank you. Don't stop. What's this? Yes, this is my favorite part of the level right here, where you're inside the movie theater, and then you're just like, oh, you're stuck in the shadow now because the projector and stuff. This film was advertised, have, advertised has been rated or restricted for uh, language, violence, and nudity. Two. Many ghosts. Ooh, oh boy. Winners don't use drugs. They just punch spirits. And then here we got like a bunch of old movies. I, I can't figure out. I think this might be Rambo right here. Uh, I'm going to guess maybe this is Top Gun. Uh, we got Commando being played in there, so I'm guessing that's what the, the R-rated movie that we were going through was. Uh, I'm going to guess and say this was... Hmm. I'm going to guess The Thing. And this is probably Star Wars. And we got Crush Groove. Uh, I believe that's the good and the bad and the ugly. I think that's Halloween, I'm going to guess. Not 100% sure on that. Maybe not. We got Commando. We got Hellcraft Covenant. Reanimator. Oh, ma that's what that was. That was a, uh, the thing for Reanimator. Uh, Subway. Dream Child. Uh, Crush Grove. Silver Bullet. Goonies and Ghostbusters. I think this one's right here is Goonies. And the Ghostbusters one we'll actually see pretty soon. I think it's right outside here. Yep, there it is can't really use the Ghostbusters logo, so they just did their best with what they could. It's just basically the ghost enemy with a cross out of it. Which, I guess, is an intu intuitive way to uh, avoid copyright issues. And just use an enemy that you made in your own game, and then just use that as a parody. Although, is it really a parody if it's literally just a... I guess maybe just more of a reference. Anyways, boss time! It's Tiny Birds! This boss is so not a boss, I even struggle to even call it a boss, to be honest. But it's not any less annoying. Just basically, you've got to kill birds. That, that's it. Just punch birds. Very tiny birds. Sooner or later, there will be a crow that shows up, and then you have to punch it. It involves a lot of things in this game can be solved by punching. I think that, yeah, they will avoid you if you just start throwing fists around. So what you kind of want to do is just let them get close and then just start swinging. And you should be able to hit one or two. Unless they swarm you like that, in which case you'll become a zombie. You can also actively try to go out of your way to take care of these birds. They're not really too tough. 
they're just really hard to see at times, especially when they get into the black background and up, up there. Damn it. Just do your best not to get cornered and swarmed by them. Also, make sure that you stay below them because they can fly lower than you and just attack your feet, in which case you can't really do anything to defend yourself against them with. Damn it. I think they they took insult with the fact that I called them not a boss, even though they're the mall's boss fight. They're like, I'll show you a boss fight. We're going to be the one thing that's killed you multiple times now. How do you like that, sucker? Damn, almost got through this without getting hit. Come on. Come on. There we go. Ah. How did they even hit me there? Okay, that one I can understand. Take that crow. If the crow shows up, that basically means that all the enemies are done. That's the last bird right there, and we're done. Dude, I almost got mauled at the mall. What was it? Oh, okay. That was a weird transition. Good thing I knew the back way through the theater from sneaking in there all the time. It was too bad my favorite store had been trashed. I would have been nice to grab a new Iron Maiden t-shirt. I guess that's reference to the VHS store. Well, at least I made it out of there alive, but I didn't get my cheeseburger. At this point, I just wanted to get back home, but I still had to go all the way back through the cornfield, and this time at night. I knew the crows were going to be after me, and that I had to avoid those pumpkins at all costs. A creepy cornfield at night would be terrifying. It's a good thing Donnie Johnstown doesn't get scared. Although, you might want to be pretty terrified of the blood moon up in the sky. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. My history with Breath of the Wild would indicate that no, it is not a good sign. No wonder all the enemies keep coming back. Alright, up, and two. Not really a big fan of these pumpkins, or the fact that they're invincible, by the way. Alright, let's go. Oh dear, how am I supposed to get past this? Running start? Yes. No. Ah, damn it. It's such a pain fighting those crows, especially in this level, because it, the night sky hide them so well. I say that as the first crow is behind a giant cloud that basically makes it the easiest to see out of all the crows in this game, but still, I stand by what I said. Nope, not falling for you this time. Actually, I don't really need that candy corn, so I'm just going to move on. Again, the music for here can be, it's kind of uh, catchy, but at the same time, this is one of those levels where you're going to be hearing it a lot, especially with the fact that A, this is the final level of the game, surprise, surprise, I know, but also B, this level has such a BS boss fight to it that it's, you're going to be hearing this music a lot. It's also, I think, the longest level out of all of them, which makes sense being the final level and all. Stupid birds. And I just missed the serum, and I'm getting destroyed by these zombies down here. Awesome. I really could have used that candy bar. Like, I really could have used that candy bar up there. Not this time. I almost have tempted to see if I can just speed run my way through this, just keep hopping it back and forth and just trying my best to avoid enemies. Oh boy. Ah, damn it. My punches were off. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm just just being too reckless now. All right, not this time, crows. Come on. Thank you. I will gladly take that candy corn. I'll let you two fools fall to your deaths. And now we can just move on. I guess the trick I can say for the crows is try to uh, be facing whichever way they're flying because they will fall down right into your fist when uh, they attack you. It's so like right here, falls, and I get hit because I was off. But we can grab that candy corn to heal back up a bit. Here it comes. Okay, maybe not. Don't follow my advice. My advice is bad advice. Really bad advice, it seems. Alright, I think this is one where I also need to make a bit of a leap of faith because the timing on these is kind of askewed. Actually, I think this might do it. Alright. Couldn't get the last serum, but at least I got that full heal. And that's all that really matters to me. There'll be a part in this level where... I can show you the exploit of, hey, you can get unlimited one-ups here, and it's right here in the silo. This very haunted silo. The biggest problem with it is getting to the, the exploit. Especially with the fact there's just so many ghosts in here, and they attack from all sides. If I can just get there... Safe and sound, I should be good. Am I here? Yep, okay. So there's a serum right up there. What I wanna do is just hop up here, hop down here, and then fall right up. I completely whiffed it. Soiled it. Also, you wanna be careful whichever part of the silo you die on because whichever one you die on, that's where you respawn. Just keep doing this. Popping up here. I need to be super careful doing so. Alright, so do this. Hop down here. You land on this platform, then jump back up, and then you land immediately right back here. And basically, you just rinse and repeat until you get sick and tired of farming for lives. This is almost an invaluable thing to do to get the uh, enough to beat the boss. Uh, just don't do that. Uh, be sure to keep a little bit away from the walls so that way you don't accidentally uh, hug it too much and then you just fall to your, uh, back to the beginning of the level. I'll give it one more go just so that we can get through here if I can get through these ghosts without dying. Damn it. All right, well, at least I'm back up here. Over 320 in his body count. Jeez, Donnie is a mass murderer. Basically, just fall where the soda is, and then you'll be good. All right. Not going to keep doing it just because no one really wants to see me standing around here uh, beating up ghosts for an hour. I'm just going to hop down here, keep hugging... The right side. Get down here and beat these zombies. And with that, we are out of here. And there is another evilly placed uh, serum soda that I have no idea how to get to. Because it's in a place where you can't really get up to to begin with. And I'm dead. Alright, well, either way, we are coming up on time right now, so I might as well give my thoughts on this game. Uh, it's good. It's really good. It's a really fun NES game. It's not too long. It's not too short. It's just right in the length. Aside from the Crows, it's a pretty decent and forgiving game at times, aside from the platforming at a few segments of there, but it's few and far between. I would give this final game of Huntover 2020 uh, the skeletal thumbs up of approval because it's honestly one of the best games to play for Halloween. Aside from maybe like costume quests or anything. I had a good time with it. I hope you did too. I hope you all have a very happy and safe Halloween. 
I will see you all next month for whatever shenanigans I find myself getting into. So until then, I will see you all then.